Russian forces are stepping up their attacks across Ukraine. The strikes are hitting military as well as civilian targets. The assaults come as a new, a new round of talks between Ukrainian and Russian negotiators begin. Kiev says it wants to discuss a ceasefire and the immediate withdrawal of Russian troops. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky uh, says citizens have no choice but to keep up their resistance despite the heavy loss of life. A Russian artillery strike on Kyiv's city limits. Firefighters rescue people from the smoldering ruins of a nine-story apartment building, hit during an early morning attack. Part of renewed fighting on the outskirts of the capital, which has so far resisted Russia's advance. President Vladimir Zelensky vowed ultimate victory as he met wounded soldiers recovering in a Kyiv military hospital. On a visit to boost morale, he handed out medals in recognition of their bravery. Though Russian forces appear to be widening their attacks across Ukraine, Zelensky indicated progress could be made as bilateral talks continue. Representatives of our countries are holding daily talks via video conference. Our delegation has a clear task to do everything to arrange the meeting of the presidents. The meeting, I'm sure, people are waiting for. Obviously, this is a difficult story, a hard path. But we need this path. On Sunday, Moscow brought its war nearer to the Polish border. An attack on a military training ground near Lviv in western Ukraine was the closest strike so far to NATO territory. Civilians from all over Ukraine have been fleeing to Lviv, which felt safe compared to eastern regions under Russian assault. Like the city of Kramatorsk. Eyewitness video from a resident there showed destruction to her apartment in a five-story building in the aftermath of an air raid. Russia's defense ministry denies targeting civilians and is holding fast to its description of its war as a special military operation. It says its forces have destroyed nearly 4,000 objects of Ukraine's military infrastructure. Well, let's cross over to DW's Nick Connolly, who's standing by in Kiev. Nick, as we saw there in that report, a residential building uh, within the city limits of Kiev was hit by uh, a Russian airstrike. What more can you tell us? Well, we've seen some pretty uh, shocking images from the northern edge of Kiev. It's about 10 kilometers is the bird's uh, you know, direct line from where I am. Uh, and the building was hit about five in the morning. We're not quite sure yet if it was an airstrike or if it was artillery. Um, we have been reading reports in Ukrainian media of two people killed and a further three wounded. The uh, fire began on the kind of ground floor, moved its way up, part of the facade collapsed. This is unfortunately no novelty in Kiev now. We saw in the first days of the war um, a rocket hitting a newly built apartment block pretty high up. People sent scrambling there. Um, this is now coming close to the centre of Kiev where I am now, which for now is still uh, remarkably calm and serene, even if it is pretty empty. Uh, but this is drawing in closer by the day. Well, as the news on Kiev is tightening. There are new talks today between the Russian and Ukrainian delegation. Is there any reason for Ukrainians to be hopeful? I mean, the, they, they will need to be hopeful. They need to show that they're willing to turn up for these talks. It's about the optics to show that Ukraine is open to dialogue. I think no side, neither the Russians nor the Ukrainians, want to be accused of not being open to that kind of dialogue. But if you look at the Russian demands, they haven't reduced them much yet. They're still basically uh, demanding that Ukraine gives up not only its aspiration to join NATO, but also basically gives up a lot of its military uh, and also recognizes Russian possession of annexed Crimea and recognizes those self-proclaimed republics in the east. So the rhetoric from Russia might be a bit more open to discussion than it was in the first two days of this war. But if you look at the integrity, they are still demanding a hell of a lot from Ukraine. And it would be very difficult to see uh, a situation in which Volodymyr Zelensky, Ukraine's democratically elected president, could ask his people who have you know, borne extraordinary losses in recent days to basically give up on all those Russian demands, give in to those demands for Ukrainian uh, basically disarmament and uh, you know, neutrality 
in return for what? Why have they been fighting for all these days? It's going to be a very difficult uh, negotiation, not just with the Russians, but also with Ukraine's people, if indeed the Ukrainian government decides to go for some kind of deal with the Russians. Mm. Now, officials in Kyiv say they're preparing food supplies for the city's remaining two million inhabitants in case of a siege. Uh, is there any indication how long Kyiv would be able to hold out? Well, obviously, this is the scenario that everyone here has been preparing for for weeks. Every kind of couple of days, you get a report that the Russians are now two, three days away from encircling the city. That hasn't happened so far. The city has held up. There are still several routes in and out of the city bringing in food and other supplies. But yes, that is what the city government says they are preparing for at least two weeks worth of supplies for the estimated two million people still here in the city. Um, Obviously, Kiev is the place where Ukraine's military is concentrated. It has the best anti-aircraft uh, and anti-rocket uh, protection. Just in the last hour, we've heard some pretty loud bangs and read in the news that those were Russian missiles headed this way that were intercepted. So I think there is no sense that the Ukrainian government is going to give up its capital without a fight. President Zelensky is still here. And it obviously would be a tremendous blow to Ukraine's efforts to defend its sovereignty if the Russians were to take hold of the capital. Well, on Sunday, uh, Russia attacked a military target in the far west of the country, uh, in striking distance to NATO, NATO uh, territory. How significant uh, is that? I think it's significant for a number of reasons. Firstly, uh, it is pretty close to the border with NATO, with Poland, a place that has seen hundreds of thousands of people fleeing the country in recent days and weeks. So even for people just trying to get out who thought that you know, having left Kiev, having left Kharkiv cities in the centre and the east of the country, they were in safety. They are now very aware that until they get out of Ukraine, there is nowhere that is basically safe. But I think this is also a signal to NATO. This was a military base where Western countries carried out training for Ukrainian soldiers how to use those Western weapons they've been using so successfully against the Russians in recent weeks. So this is a part of this uh, campaign by the Kremlin to prevent the West, to discourage the West from providing Ukraine with more sophisticated weapons. We've heard from Vladimir Putin in recent days, he said that basically as soon as those weapons cross the Ukrainian border, they are fair game and that Russia is increasingly seeing countries who help Ukraine militarily as party to this conflict. So a real escalation there, a sense that Russia would be willing to go after NATO members potentially if they step up that support for Ukraine. Nick Connolly there in Kiev for us. Thank you, Nick.